Hello, I am Kobayashi from Sony. In this video, we will discuss why we should use deep learning and the degree to which deep learning has gained acceptance and popularity lately. I will also discuss the advantages of using deep learning as early as possible. This graph, which is typically used when first introducing the idea of deep learning, shows the increasing image classification performance that has been achieved recently. Image classification is performed by providing images to a computer and having the computer classify the image by the subject of the image such as an image of a person or dog. The horizontal axis in this graph represents the decade, and the vertical axis represents the error rate. The error rate refers to how often a computer was incorrect in classifying images. Before the use of deep learning, researchers around the world used conventional machine learning technology to perform image classification tasks. With that technology, performance improved steadily but slowly at a rate of about 1 to 2 percent per year. Use of deep learning began in 2012, resulting in a sudden and significant improve in error rate performance by 30%. This improvement was not a one-time thing. Similar levels of performance increases have continued each year since. Performance continues to improve with a very rapid exponential momentum of 50% per year. Initially, a difficult goal of reaching the same error rate as that of humans, which is around 5%, was the objective. However, this exponential improvement in performance enabled systems to exceed the performance of humans in 2015. For this reason, deep learning is gaining a lot of attention. The takeaway is to consider what will happen if this trend continues. If this current rate of performance increases continues throughout 2019 and 2020, we expect systems having image classification capability that vastly exceeds that of humans. Having such a significant gap in performance between systems and humans means that deep learning is overwhelmingly more powerful than conventional machine learning and rural-based programs. This performance increase is not limited to only image classification. The same level of performance increases has been seen in many other applications. For example, voice recognition experienced a similar increase in performance of 30% when deep learning was first used in 2011. This was quite a significant achievement. Performance has continued to increase in a similar way every year resulting in achieving a level of voice recognition performance similar to that of humans in 2016. The Game of Go is another example. A Go program developed with deep learning defeating a professional Go player made huge headlines in the news. Performance has continued to increase every year since this event back in October of 2015. With the recent achievement of defeating the number one player in the world followed by even more performance increases means that we are developing algorithms that are even more powerful than the one used to defeat professional players previously. As you can see, deep learning is used to develop systems that surpass the capabilities of humans in many applications besides just image classification. One of major advantages of deep learning is that it enables performance exceeding that of humans while still being easy to use. To be specific, you can create a recognition system using deep learning in only three steps as follows. The first step is to prepare datasets. If creating a handwritten digit classification system, you would need datasets to train the handwritten digit classification system to classify images of 0 and 1. You would need a large number of handwritten digits between 0 and 9. You also need to prepare a dataset representing the correct classification results so that the system outputs the correct classification of 0 or 1 when performing the classification process. This is equivalent to preparing training materials for people. The first step is this preparation of training materials, which corresponds to the correct answers for the task. The next step is to design the neural network configuration. Neural networks are a technology used to simulate a human brain on a computer. 
In this second step, you consider how to simulate a human brain on a computer and design the configuration to achieve the desired simulation. I will go over this step in more detail in future videos. The third step is using the training materials prepared in step 1 to train the neural network brain designed in step 2. The training performed in this step is what enables the neural network to correctly classify an image of a handwritten digit 2 when input for classification. Creating classification technologies was never this easy previously. The ease by which we now create new technologies is part of the reason why performance is so much higher in comparison with conventional machine learning technologies. Deep learning is a technology that enables us to easily create classification systems. The fundamental concept of functional development is undergoing significant change because of the ability with deep learning to create classification systems more easily and with significantly better performance over conventional programming. For example, when developing a handwritten digit classification system using conventional methods, you would need to determine the functional blocks required to accomplish the task. Some examples of these functional blocks include preprocessing, feature extraction, and machine learning. To achieve suitable performance with conventional methods, you would need design experience to divide the required functionality into modules. You would also need sufficient programming skills to produce modules that achieve high levels of performance. The complexity of the functionality created was proportional to the size of the program. In contrast, functional development using deep learning requires the preparation of neural networks. Then you take the input data and the desired answers corresponding to the input data to train the neural network. This is known as end-to-end -end learning, which means a functional development process by which all functionality from input to output is trained to derive the desired result from the system. This means that the data amount determines the performance and complexity of the functionality developed. The skills and development methodologies necessary to develop high-performance functionality are starting to change significantly. Let's compare the workflow of actual software development with functional development using deep learning. With conventional development, first requirements and specifications are determined. The architecture is then designed to divide functionality into blocks. Once developed, the code is then debugged and compiled as part of the final tuning process. Quality assurance is performed, and then the software is released. With deep learning-based development, the step to determine requirements and specification is the same. The step to divide the architecture into functional blocks is replaced with a step to design the architecture according to what kind of input data is available and the desired output based on the input data. The code development and debugging steps are replaced with the process of collecting and providing data to obtain the desired functionality. Compiling step is replaced by the neural network training process. The quality assurance step is replaced with the process of using evaluation data to evaluate if sufficient performance has been obtained. A high degree of versatility enables deep learning to be applied to many different kinds of tasks. We have been primarily using image classification for illustrative purposes. In this example, images are the input and the image classification is the output. If we replace the images with sentences as the input, we can create a neural network to automatically classify sentences. Another example would be machine translation. With input of English word strings and output of Japanese word strings, we can train the neural network with a large number of translations and obtain a machine translation algorithm. By changing the inputs and outputs, deep learning is highly versatile in creating many different types of functionality. This technology is limited only by your imagination. Using deep learning to create high-performance systems as we have discussed in this video is actually quite easy. We are reaching the state where even non-specialized engineers can easily develop classification systems. 
as this technology is also quite versatile, these engineers can develop many different systems in addition to image classification. We also find ourselves in the middle of a fundamental switch from a development process of taking functionality requirements and dividing them into modules to using end-to-end -end training from input to output to obtain all functionality during the training process. In this new paradigm, what companies need is not architects and developers, but innovators with great ideas. What will be needed are ideas such as what kind of data could be used and what kind of output should be used to create high-value functionality. Data is also critical as data is the key requirement to develop this functionality. As you can see, deep learning is a game-changing technology that is completely changing how functionality is developed. With such a change in functional development, we need to change our perspectives and thought processes. I think many organizations, especially large ones, will have difficulty in making these changes in thinking. Deep learning is a technology with great potential. This technology is already mature enough to be used to solve real problems in society. This technology has the potential to enable the invention of interesting and intelligent functionality that does not yet currently exist. I feel that this potential has still not yet been realized. At present, too many people lack awareness and enthusiasm for the potential of deep learning. The first thing we need to do is raise awareness of deep learning with as many people as we can. By starting with an understanding of this potential and fundamental change in the development process, the number of people using deep learning can increase 10 or even 100 times. This would surely result in deep learning being used to rapidly contribute to. In future videos, I would like to discuss how to utilize deep learning in more detail.